as we're getting towards the end of the summer now and entering autumn time to diversify methods of finding invertebrates one of the best methods the most enjoyable and comfortable methods is sorting through this stuff not here i'm just taking a carrier bag full back home to be sorted at a later date and in the comfort of my own home Well, this very large pile of manure has obviously been here quite some time. There's probably several years worth of manure here on the edge of this field. Just outside the village of Hockton, which is quite close to the towns of Southwell and Newark. And manure heaps like this, especially the sides that get the most sun, are great places to look for invertebrates. But in order to do that, it's easier just to take a sample in a carrier bag take that home and you can sort it at home in your leisure and while you're sat down with a cup of tea or a stronger beverage. I'm hoping that as this has been here for at least several years there are some interesting invertebrates, namely invertebrates that have eight legs and two crab-like pincers. I'm after false scorpions and manure heaps like this are some of the best places in which you can search for them. Well, I'm now back home, safe and sound, and it's the next day, actually. And when I bring these samples home, I always try and get a carry bag that hasn't got a small hole in them, or sometimes they do have a couple of sort of breathing holes. But always tie your sample, tie the top of the bag, because often if you leave it overnight, what's in here will crawl out, or fly out, or jump out, or slither out, whatever, isn't it? So sometimes I'll keep it outside the back door, but try and keep it somewhere where it's dry and cool, or I'll keep it in the shed outside. But in all honesty, and in most cases, I'll just keep this in the kitchen, or sometimes I'll bring it upstairs into this room. But that's the sample. What equipment do you need? Well, if you've never seen one of these videos before, and it is nine months, apparently, since I did one of these, because sampling... A variety of mediums whether it's dry manure or a very damp manure leaf litter moss anything grass that's usually something that i do a lot of during the winter months there's no excuse not to be looking for invertebrates and you know throughout the year so much you can do during the winter months as long as you diversify and look for things other than butterflies and moths and dragonflies but the equipment you'll need is one of these either a shallow tray, which I often use, or if I know that there's likely to be a number of spiders in there, and there will only be small spiders, I'll use a deeper tray, and this one's about a three inch deep tray, smooth sided as well, so spiders struggle, and everything struggles to get out. No defense against flies, of course, and you will have lots of flies at certain times of the year in any sample. And that's it. That's all you need, but a help, especially if your eyes are as bad as mine, is a magnifying glass. And I use a fine brush and usually a couple of pairs of tweezers too. And you will need some containers to put your catches in. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of containers, as you can imagine. And I have them sat at the side of me. Do that now. We're all set to go and sort through this sample. We may be lucky 
and get false scorpion or pseudoscorpion in it and a range of other interesting invertebrates. It's a great way of finding invertebrates that, to be honest, you're highly unlikely to find just by visual searching. And it gives you something to do on those cool autumn or cold winter's days. Right. So our first bit of sampling now, when I pick a manure, I like to pick it when it comes off like this, when it comes out in layers. And you need dry manure or only very slightly damp manure like this. And it's just a simple case of just pulling it lightly apart, a few pieces at a time, and then give it a tap. Give it a decent shake. Might look rough, but everything will be fine. And then it's a case of removing the excess, putting that into a second carrier bag, and then it's a case of just spreading what you have and then looking to see what there is now there might not appear a great deal but appearances can be deceiving and we'll give it a minute or two and we'll have a closer look if you're looking as in this case mainly for Pseudoscorpions, they are tiny, but there will be a range of species as you go through your sample. This is not a method really if you're very much a beginner into insects and invertebrates. A lot of what you find won't be obviously and easily identifiable. So we'll have a closer look. We have look in the centre or just to the top. We have our first pseudoscorpion, not very large, the fabulous things these are, I love these, and they're very interactive too, if I can move that round and try and keep it clear as best I can around it. But you need to spend several minutes per sample because there can be apparently nothing and then all of a sudden one of these will jungle out, sometimes backwards. They are super things, so you're very reactive. Let's see if we can get in just a touch closer. This seems to be the only one in this sample. Now the two types that this is most likely to be, I do need to get some photos and have a proper look. It could be Lampraternes nodosus, which is a common one, one of the commonest that you'll find in manure heats. But Salafaternes scorpioides is also common, regularly found. It's not been commonly found in Nottinghamshire, it's fairly new to the Nottinghamshire list, Scorpioides, but it's turning up now. But in many cases, identification of these does require microscopic examination. You don't have to cut them up, but they aren't the easiest of things to identify, especially when they run and hide like that. But that's the kind of thing you're looking for. When you're looking for false scorpions, 
in many other, or in any other medium. You need to sit and look. Then all of a sudden, out they come like that. They are absolutely brilliant things. Got no sting. Can't do you any harm whatsoever. Just wonderful little invertebrates. But you could be looking at that and think, well, there's nothing in here. And then all of a sudden, the bottom left of the screen, you see a bit of movement, and out one comes. And you can see how thin they are as well. That's why they can get in to the in between the layers of substrate. So we have one false scorpion, a success. We'll see if we can turn up any more, so we'll get our next sample. I usually only get what I can loosely hold in one hand. That gives plenty to go through and I'm just lightly fingering through this. And remove the excess. And then spread that out a little bit. And now we'll look for movement. There is another two pseudoscorpions in this handful. Again, it was a one of the handfuls where the straw and manure was compacted together into sort of layers. As you saw in the introduction, I took sample from the outer edge, the warmest part of the manure heap. Very easy to miss these. So you, in order to find false scorpions in manure, you really want manure that certainly has been out all summer, if not a couple of years. The longer the better, really, as long as you can access it safely and that it's dry, especially on the outside. On the in, inside, the further in into the heat that you go obviously the more damp it will be just see the front end and that's what you're looking for if you're looking for false scorpions in manure samples you're pretty much guaranteed and you'll find these throughout the year this is probably the earliest i've ever taken a sample of manure to be honest so usually it's something for a winter's day Go out in the morning, collect a carrier bag full. If you see manure heaps in a field, that's what you're looking for. You can, of course, go straight to the farmer and ask him for some. But you want oldish manure that has had the sun on it, some warmth, the flies have got into it because these are what's called phoretic. It's a method of transportation where they grab the leg of a fly or a beetle and don't let go till they've got to where they want to. Sometimes you can have several of these 
attached to one fly. And once I had a look at this one and the other one, I'll put a photo in telling you exactly what species these are. And there's usually one species per manure heap, occasionally two. This is the last, the very dregs at the bottom of the carrier bag. And I've had a number of false scorpions, which have turned out to be Salafaturnes scorpioides, which is another welcome record. To be honest, any record of a false scorpion in Nottinghamshire is welcome because they're very under-recorded. Great little things to find. One of those invertebrates that once people realise that these little things can be found all over the place, including gardens, people want to see one. That they are very, very tiny. And if you've got a compost heap in your garden, chances are you could well have one of these or a couple of these in it. Nice to get some because it has another grid square for Scorpioides on the Nottinghamshire map, which only has now, well, this will be the fourth site. And most of those sites have come from just random sampling of manure heaps that have been stood throughout the summer in a farmer's field. They're not there forever if you see manure heaps. Very rare that they're there for ever usually farmer just piles it up and then after harvesting and before the soil is cultivated again the manure goes on and you've lost that chance to add a grid square to your county excellent Sometimes you'll get samples that won't have four scorpions in, but from my experience, if you're sampling manure, you never fail to have four scorpions in it. Find another pile now. So Google Maps map out piles of manure. Apparently not. 